wardens are the most powerful mobs in all of Minecraft, which is why I wanted to make them even stronger. So I created the Fire Warden, a warden that can shoot flaming sonic booms and is overall 100 times tougher than a regular warden. And now for the next 100 days, I'll be surviving as the Fire Warden in game, gaining tons of amazing powers and growing into bigger and more powerful forms. Will I be able to defeat the gigantic water wither storm or will my flames be put out? You'll have to watch until the end to see. On day one, I spawned into a deep dark volcano as a baby warden. All of my fire warden people had gathered around to celebrate my birthday, including my mom. Are you ready, son? Today you get your powers. Let's do this. The ritual began as I stepped into the fire. I watched my hearts dip lower and lower, but just as I was about to die, the power of flame fused into me. I transformed into a fire warden, giving me five more hearts and new abilities. Suddenly, the ceiling of our volcano home was destroyed and rain began to pour down onto my people as the water wither storm emerged over our heads. He was the biggest monster I had ever seen. Enjoy the celebration while you can. Today I begin to spread my storm all over the world. The entity unleashed a powerful beam, causing massive destruction as his army of water minions poured into our colony. They used their water-coated tentacles to attack my people left and right until one of the terrifying monsters came after me next. I was about to get hurt. Leave my son alone! But my mom was able to stop the monster before it could. Bronzo, you must find your dad. He'll know how to stop this. Just then, a water prison appeared around my mom, capturing her. The water wither storm had turned its attention to us. I had to hide. Oh no, mom, I have to hurry. I ran away to search for my dad. I left my volcano home before I could get caught. On day two, I ran through the overworld as rain continued to pour down onto me. As a fire warden, I was weak to the water from the storm. It began to deal poison damage to me and my health was rapidly dropping. I had to find cover if I wanted to live. Just then, I spotted a cave and quickly ran inside for shelter. However, once I headed deeper into it, I was ambushed by a giant water golem. We've got you now, fire mob. I'm taking you back to the water with a storm. Before the water golem was able to capture me, my dad jumped in to protect me. He unleashed his amazing fire powers onto the enemy, killing him and saving my life. Look, are you okay? Yes, but our people are in trouble. We need your help. Suddenly, the cave began to tremble violently under our feet. The walls cracked open around us as we came to a terrible realization. My dad tried to protect me as the walls crumbled and water poured into the room. On day three, the dust settled and my dad and I found ourselves standing on a lone platform surrounded by water. The water levels continued to rise. We need to find a way out of the cave before it's too late. Stand back, I've got this. My dad used one of his fire warden abilities to create lava. It mixed with the water and allowed him to begin to build a bridge of obsidian. He was making good progress until suddenly the roof sprang another leak and poured more water down from above him. Dad, look out! He reacted too late and ended up getting hit by the water. I ran to his side, but he was wounded from the accident. His fire powers were no longer as strong as they once were. Bronzo, I'm too weak to finish the bridge. It's up to you now. I knew I had to do this, so I focused on my new fire powers until I was able to unleash the same lava attack as my dad. I managed to finish the last stretch of the bridge. I did it! And the two of us escaped before the situation got hairier. On days four through five, my dad and I returned to our home to find it in shambles. Many of our people were injured and the entire colony was badly damaged. This is worse than I thought. Come with me, son. My dad took me to another part of the deep dark volcano and opened a hidden room. Inside was a forge and a map sitting on a platform, which my dad handed to me. What is this? Our people are capable of forging an ancient weapon of great power. Legend has it that if you can collect all of the fire artifacts and forge the infernal warden staff, 
You will be the most powerful fire entity that ever lived. I believe this weapon is the only way to save your mom and defeat the Water Wither Storm once and for all. I'm too badly wounded to hand up the journey. This mission is up to you, my son. My dad handed me a care package containing food and tools I would need for my quest. I won't let you down. I'll save mom and the rest of our people. I left the colony and began to follow the map he gave me towards the first artifact. Things were going well until suddenly I ran into a pack of hungry ice bears. Dinner has arrived. Get them, boys. The creatures lunged at me and I braced myself. On days six through seven, I was fighting off the pack of ice bears. They used their glacial shard attacks on me, cooling down my flames and weakening my powers. I dodged where I could, but between their attacks and the ice around me, I was at a major disadvantage. I tried using my fire warden abilities to fight back, but it was no use. They outnumbered me. I managed to defeat quite a few of them, but I was running out of energy fast. Two of the remaining ice bears blasted me with their frigid ice beams, landing a critical hit and causing me to drop some of my food as well as the map. We got it. Let's go, my guy. The ice bears ran away, but I couldn't let them take my stuff. Hey, that's mine. Get back here. I chased after them until I spotted a Yeti at the entrance of an ice shrine. Something about it drew me in and I knew it was important. Whoa, I wonder what this place is about. I quietly walked into the shrine and spotted the first artifact I needed for the infernal warden staff sitting on an altar. However, the sleeping Yeti was obviously guarding it. Hopefully, it wouldn't be a problem. I don't stand a chance against that thing. I'll need to be careful not to wake it up. On days eight through nine, I stealthed my way through the ice shrine towards the fire artifact. I tried to be careful not to wake up the sleeping ice yeti, but I accidentally slipped and lost my balance on the ice, sliding me straight towards the monster. Ah! I managed to stop myself on some snow before I would crash into them. That would have been bad. I have to be more careful. I continued to creep around the guard until finally I reached the artifact. I claimed it for myself, but when I grabbed it, a massive heat wave surged from me. I transformed into a stronger body with five more hearts and new abilities. One piece down, five more to go. Suddenly, the heat from my new form caused the Yeti to wake up. You're intruder, prepare to die. The Ice Yeti angry really lunged at me. On days 10 through 12, I was fighting the Ice Yeti. He used his ice powers on me to try and freeze me in place. Luckily, I was able to use my fire abilities to thaw myself free from his icy attacks. However, I still had to dodge his ground pound and slash attacks that did a lot of damage. Taste my flames! I used my new fire powers to send hit after hit at the enemy. Unfortunately, I realized that I had been reckless. The heat of my attack started to melt the area around me until I was almost completely surrounded by water. Nowhere to run now, Fire Warden. That's what you think. Using the remaining icy platforms, I began to jump over the dangerous water below. Each one I landed on melted under my feet, so I had to move fast. Finally, I made it to the other side, separating the beast and I with a large body of water. See you later. I escaped the ice shrine and successfully claimed the first piece I needed for the Infernal Warden staff. However, I didn't get to celebrate long before I heard someone screaming for help. Help! That doesn't sound good. I better see what's wrong. I followed the source of the yelling before it was too late. On days 13 through 15, I followed the distress call until I arrived at a village that had been set on fire. The residents were running in fear as their homes were consumed by flames. Don't worry, I'll help you. I rushed to save one of the residents trapped under rubble, but to my surprise, they hit me away from them. Don't touch me, you monster. You did this to our village. What? No, I would never. You won't trick me. The water wither storm told us this is your doing. Everyone, get him. The villagers turned on me and began to attack. They used everything they had to try and kill me. Some even tried to pour water on my head. Please, this is all a misunderstanding. The water wither storm lied to you. Suddenly, the village elder stepped forward and began to perform a magical ritual. Oh, great water gods. Remove this monster from our village! Through his magic, he successfully summoned a mighty water falcon. The aquatic bird swooped in and attacked me. 
On days 16 to 18, I was fighting the Water Falcon. I launched Fire Slash after Fire Slash at my enemy, hoping in vain that one of my attacks would land. The flame sizzled harmlessly against the Falcon as it hit me with its water mines, causing sprays of water to splash painfully against me. I used my roar to fire in a desperate move, but the Water Falcon took it and simply retaliated with a bubble attack that caused me to levitate into the air, immobilizing me. I tried to fight back, tearing balls of fire from my chest and hurling them at my foe. But as a being of flame, I didn't stand a chance against the watery bird. I can't keep this up much longer. As things were getting dangerous, a little villager called out to me. Fire Warden, come here if you want to live. I followed behind her and took cover from the water falcon, allowing me to lose them for now. Thanks for helping me. But aren't you supposed to be mad at me? I saw a water elemental set the village on fire, but when I tried telling the others, no one believed me. Don't worry, I'm gonna take you right to them so we can clear your name. Sounds like a plan. We quickly headed toward the water elemental, getting out of the area before the water falcon could find me again. On days 19 through 22, I was following the villager to the area the water elemental was last spotted, finding the area covered in holes. Oh no, look at all these. They could be in any of these. The water falcon will find us and it'll be too late. Don't worry, I have an idea. I used my warden powers to sense the creatures around the nearby area, allowing me to see through the ground. I was able to spot the water elemental lurking in one of the nearby holes. Aha, gotcha. I got a running start and jumped down the hole where the water elemental was lurking, but realized that I was heading straight towards a pit of water. I used my quick thinking to turn the water under me into obsidian using my fire powers. I landed pretty hard though, taking some damage, but I had survived. Looking around, I saw the water elemental standing in the cave. Hey, stop right there. Get away from me. The water elemental ran away deeper into the tunnel system and I ran after them. On days 23 to 26, I was chasing the water elemental farther into the tunnel system. He tried to throw me off his trail by taking tons of twists and turns, but thanks to my warden echolocation powers, I could see him through the walls. You can't escape me! I finally managed to corner him in an underground hot spring. As I was moving in closer, I spotted the next part I needed to create the infernal warden staff. Well, well, well. Looks like I'll get the part and defeat you. Oh, no, you don't. That part is mine now. The water elemental made a break for the artifact, grabbing it, causing him to transform into a bigger and more powerful form. Uh-oh, that's not good. So much energy. I feel amazing. I'll show you my new strength. Die! The water elemental surged forward, attacking me with his powerful water beam. On days 27 through 30, I was fighting against an empowered water elemental. In his new form, the water elemental unleashed his empowered attacks. With a roar, he hit me with torrential blasts of water that slammed into me with crushing force. With a flap of his fins, he summoned a gang of sea urchins to assist in the fight. The urchins shot me with pointy spikes as the water elemental elemental called forth a huge tidal wave that crushed and immobilized me. I was not prepared to fight such an upgraded opponent. Despite fighting back with my own fire powers, I just wasn't strong enough to gain the upper hand. The fireballs and slashes I retaliated with weren't nearly hot enough to leave a singe on him. And when I unleashed my most powerful attacks, he took cover inside of his shell. I can't win this. I need to get that artifact from him so I can gain power or else I'm toast. I took advantage of my surroundings and used my heat from the nearby hot spring to power up my next attack and knock back the water elemental. And he dropped the artifact as he was pushed back from the force. Quickly, I ran up and claimed the artifact for myself, transforming into an even stronger form. I gained five hearts and new powers. That's more like it. Looks like I just leveled the playing field. That doesn't matter. I'll still win. The water elemental used another of their water blasts, but with my new abilities, I let loose with my new blazing fire wheel. Flames hotter than anything I had created before. Finally, the monster fell. A note remained where the water elemental 
elemental had been. So I picked it up. Reading over the note, I realized that the water wither storm put him up to the fire. I can't believe the water wither storm told me to burn that village. How devious. We light fires and the blame gets put onto the fire warden. I simply cannot wait to see the look on his face when he realizes what happened. Signed, Water Elemental. All right, this is exactly what I needed. It's time to show the villagers the truth. I returned to the village and presented the elder with a note. Oh my gosh, our beloved water with a storm lied to us. This is an absolute outrage. Without warning, lightning came crashing down right in front of us as the water wither storm himself came flying over. It looks like my subjects have betrayed me. You will regret this. On days 31 through 34, the water wither storm was unleashing a terrible hurricane onto the people's village. Rain was pouring down over us, and lightning strikes were falling everywhere. I began taking damage from the falling water, but I couldn't allow these people to get hurt. Everyone, hurry, come with me. I led all the villagers to a shelter, but as soon as we entered, lightning began blasting at us from above. We were safe for now, but our shelter wasn't going to hold forever. As I was trying to come up with a plan, the little villager from before ran up to me. I have an idea. Follow me. We all followed the little villager to an iron ore quarry. We can use all this iron to make us a lightning rod. Good plan. I'm on it. I used my fire warden powers to melt the iron down, creating tons of iron blocks. I used the materials to construct a giant lightning rod. All of the lightning bolts were now drawn into the lightning rod. The village had been saved. We returned to the village as the storm finally began to clear up. As I arrived at the center of the village, the elder came forward to speak to me. We're sorry for dumping to conclusions. Please, here, take this map. It will help you on your journey. Thanks for everything. I'll make sure the water wither storm pays for his evil deeds. Having saved the village, I set off, following the map I had been given. On days 35 through 38, I finally arrived at the location marked on the map. It was a fire temple. I walked inside, finding different fire mobs fighting each other in a test of strength. As I took it all in, I spotted the next artifact I needed for the Infernal Warden staff in the back of the temple. There it is! The Elder was right! I tried to walk towards it, but one of the fire mobs stopped me before I could reach it. Whoa there, pal. That there artifact is the grand prize for the winner of the Test of Flames. Hands off! Is that right? Well, if that's the case, then let me join. I'll win it fair and square. All right, bud. You've got yourself a deal. I followed the fire aspect to the test of flames, where my opponent and I were standing in front of a variety of materials. Listen up, fellas. A mob who can burn through the toughest material wins. Got it? All right. Get ready. Get set. Go! All right, here goes nothing. On days 39 through 42, the crowd roared as my opponent stepped up to one of the various materials on the floor. I watched as he went first, using his fire powers to melt through a block of pure obsidian. What do you think of that, huh, Pit Squeak? Wow. <laughs> That's the hottest I've ever seen someone burn. You think you can beat that, bud? I have to one-up him, but there's only one way to do that. I turned my sight to a block of pure diamond. I took a deep breath and focused all of my power, blasting my fire attacks into the block, heating it up until just the right moment. Sensing the heat was at its max, I charged forward at full speed with my flaming horns, crashing into the diamond block. My horns were hot enough to melt right through it. Unbelievable! You actually did it! You broke through the hardest material ever! Sorry, pal, but uh, I think we got us a new winner! The crowd cheered, and the announcer told me I could claim my prize. As I started to head back inside, a mighty roar shook the arena. Looming above us all was a water wither dragon. My, my, I finally found you. I will be taking that artifact now. He unleashed his water raptors into the arena, causing everyone to fall into a frenzy. 
On days 43 to 46, the water raptors swarmed the area and began to extinguish everything in sight. I had to put an end to the chaos, so I rushed toward the artifact. Unfortunately, the water wither dragon swooped in and grabbed a hold of it before I could. You're not getting your claws on this. Get back here! I chased after the flying monster out of the temple. I eventually caught up, but I was stopped at the edge of a cliff. See you later, sucker. You can't fly. <laughs> I don't need to. I used my fire powers to shoot projectiles at my flying foe, and he plummeted into the forest below. I ran after him while I had the chance. On days 47 to 50, I rushed over to where the wither sore fell. I rushed over to where the water wither dragon fell. There you are. I tried to capture him, but he managed to use the terrain to slip away. I pursued him again, but he kept getting away no matter how hard my efforts were. Enough of this. I used my fire powers to set the forest ablaze, causing him to run out of his hiding spot. That's it. I'm taking you down right here, right now. He attacked me with his hailstorm attacks intent on ending me. Not today, Water Wither Dragon. I fought back with my fire wheel attacks ferociously. He struck me with icicles, freezing me in ice. So I continued to use my fire wheels. He summoned ice walls to attack and defend himself. I then used my fiery wards to overwhelm my opponent. Our battle was fierce, but thanks to the damage he took from the fall, I came out on top and defeated him. That shows you not to play with fire. I stepped forward and obtained the stolen part. As I came into contact with it, I gained five more hearts and the wall of fire ability that I could use to protect myself. I'm one step closer to gaining the infernal warden staff and saving my mom. Suddenly, the artifact sent me into a vision. I saw my home being terrorized by the water wither storm again, and my dad was in trouble. Oh no, the water wither storm returned. I have to save my dad. I snapped out of the vision and rushed back to my home colony. On days 51 to 50, 54, I returned to the deep dark volcano to find it under attack by the water forces. My remaining fire warden brothers and sisters were fighting with everything they had, but they were no match against their water counterparts. They were beginning to lose. Leave my people alone! Look, there's, there's another, another one. one. Get him, guys! I jumped in and unleashed my new powers on the enemy water forces. One by one, they began to fall to my might. I had grown a lot over my journey, and my power was making itself known. One once the majority of the enemies surrounding me were dealt with, I pulled one of my brethren to the side to question him. Where's my dad? He's in the main chambers. Please hurry. I ran to where my dad was. He was completely surrounded by water forces. Get away from my dad! I blasted the enemies with the full force of my powers, evaporating them immediately. My son, you've grown. I'm so proud of you. Suddenly, a chilling voice echoed through the chamber. Oh, touching. Too bad this will all end. Here. The water wither storm appeared before me once again. On days 55 to 58, I was face to face with the water wither storm. You've been stirring up a lot of trouble, you little pest. And I won't stop until I create the infernal warden staff and defeat you once and for all. My, my, that's cute. But you better watch your step. Don't forget that I am your mother. I could kill her whenever I want to. You leave mom out of this. I lost my temper and attacked him with my fiery roar. <laughs> You've gotten stronger, but you're still no match for me. He unleashed his ultimate storm beam attack on me. Brother, no! My dad protected me and took the hit instead. Dad! My son, please. Find your mother. Protect our people. You're our last two. With no strength left, my dad died. No! The water wither storm prepared another attack, but I knew I couldn't let my dad's death go in vain. I sprinted out, evacuating the colony with as many of my people as possible. On days 59 to 62, I fled with the rest of my people, eventually finding a new place to hide. What are we supposed to do now? Our home is destroyed. This is hopeless. Don't worry. I won't let you guys suffer anymore. I'll come up with something. I gathered materials and built a shelter for my people to stay in. Now they would be protected from the rain. Thank you for everything.
everything, Bronzo. I think your dad would want you to have this. He handed me a map titled Warden Temple. Huh, what's this? This map will lead you to an ancient Warden Temple. Nobody has ever dared enter it, but I think it might help you on your journey. It sounds dangerous, but it brings me a step closer to forging the Infernal Warden Staff. I'll check it out. Destination charted, I set off for the temple. On days 63 to 66, I arrived at the ancient Warden Temple and found that it was completely sealed shut. I think I have to prove that I'm a Warden. I used my fire sonic boom on the entrance, and to my relief, it opened before me. As I walked inside, I spotted the next artifact I was looking for. The lead was right. I just have to grab it. I started forward toward the artifact, but before I could get too far, a massive glowing warden guardian stepped out from a skulk throne. Alt, only wardens of worth may approach this artifact. Then allow me to prove my worth. Very well. May the stronger Sonic Boom win. He roared, blasting me with his Sonic Boom attack. I bore the brunt of the attack and then blasted him back with my own powers. We were neck and neck, but my determination made my fire burn hotter. Unable to bear the heat, the Warden Guardian resigned the battle. I had won! You are worthy, young one. Now claim your prize. The Guardian returned to his throne, leaving me the artifact. I grabbed it and let the energy flow through me. I gained five more hearts and new powers. Suddenly, a pack of water wolves bursted in, led by their water wolf leader. We'll be taking this place in the name of the water with this storm. Get them, boys! The wolves swarmed forward. On days 67 to 70, the Warden Temple was under attack by water wolves. I took on the runts with my new fire powers. The water wolves were attacking me with their icy claws and teeth. I used my firewall to hold off the horde. They were no match for my awesome strength now and evaporated almost instantly. No! I'm melting! A real tough guy, huh? Well then, looks like I'm gonna have to teach you a lesson myself. The leader attacked me, charging forward with his watery headbutt and deadly claw attacks. I retaliated with my powers, but he was a tough opponent. He used his water claws and bites to attack me as I used my fireball to fight back. The attacks were intense as he surged water splashes into the air toward me. I sent a fury sonic boom his way to retaliate and his strong hydro pumps came right back at me. He summoned watery spears from the sky, creating a deadly zone, but I deployed my firewall to keep his attacks at bay. He used another fierce water headbutt attack on me, leaving me dangerously low on health. At that moment, the warden guardian stepped in. Go forward, Fire Warden. Complete your weapon and save the world. Thank you. I won't forget you. Thanks to his intervention, I was able to escape the temple. Just then, I spotted one of the water wolf runts heading off in another direction. What is he up to? Quietly, I trailed behind him. On days 71 through 74, I was following the water wolf to a water mob base full of all sorts of bad guys. This must be one of the water wither storm's bases. I snuck inside, staying hidden from the patrolling guards. As I went inside, I discovered some of my people were being captive there. I moved closer, listening on some of the water mobs talking nearby so I could learn some intel. Captain, we ran into a fire warden at the old temple. He destroyed our forces. What are we going to do? Aye, hey, that's not a problem. At least it won't be with what the boss has planned. On day 100, he said he's gonna unleash the ultimate storm, and that will extinguish any fire mob who dares to stand up against us. <laughs> day 100? Then it looks like I'm on a timer here. I have to find those last two artifacts before it's too late. I was about to sneak away and begin my search when one of the fire wardens suddenly spoke up. Your stupid plans won't work. My son is going to save us and to beat the water wither storm. Mom! I turned back, realizing my mom was one of the many fire wardens being held captive. Why, you disrespectful little... The water pirate approached my mother's cage, and I jumped in to intervene. Don't you dare touch my mom! On days 75 to 78, I jumped out to defend my mom from the pirate captain. As I did, hordes of various water mobs poured into the room to fight me. That's the fire warden. Get him! 
The skeletons shot me with their guns and speared me through with their swords as the captain orchestrated their movements. They were relentless as they mobbed me, making sure to take advantage of their larger number. The serpent-like enemies threw nets and blasted me with water attacks as I slashed back at them. But despite many of them falling to my fury, another one took their spot in the masses of enemies. I focused on the octopus captain, hoping to take out their leader instead. He summoned octopus tentacles that sprouted from the floor as they whipped up to slam at me, but I just tanked through the attacks as I zeroed in on him. With a frenzy of fire bursts, flame wheels, and a blazing hot slam, I killed the octopus captain. After the captain fell, I exploded into a furious flurry of attacks, dealing vicious blow after blow to the remaining enemies. They were forced to retreat under my might. No way we can deal with this guy alone. I'm getting back up. With the water mobs gone, I ran up to where my mom was being held. Oh, Bronzo, I'm so happy to see you. Me too. Now let me save you and the others. No, there's no time. A group our size will not be able to go undetected. The reinforcements will be here any minute. You want me to leave you all here? But I've been fighting so long to find you. I don't know if I can. My son, you need to escape and find the other remaining parts. It's the only way to stop the water wither storm for good. Go into the underground passage just west of here to find the next part. I love you, son. I promise that I'll save you and the others when I'm stronger. With a heavy heart, I ran away to the secret underground passage just as reinforcements arrived. On days 79 to 82, I landed inside of a sewer and a giant mutated moth flew by in front of me. Somehow, he didn't see me, so I quickly ducked behind cover, hiding before he could. Yikes, I better avoid that thing. I used my warden echolocation to stealth around the insect, taking whichever path that he wasn't in. There were a few close calls where he almost spotted me, but with some quick thinking, I was able to evade him. Eventually, I arrived inside of the mutant moth's nest, where I saw the next artifact waiting inside. Mom was right. The next artifact is here. I started heading to it when suddenly the mutated insect dropped down in front of me. Oh, creature of fire. Why are you doing in my nest? It shot me with a beam of water, sending me stumbling backwards and into some webs. <laughs> Looks like you're trapped now. You will make a fire. On days 83 to 86, However, I was able to use my fire to burn through the webs and escape before he could do too much damage. I'm not becoming bug food. The next artifact is going to be mine. Without hesitation, I launched a fire attack on the insect, starting an all out brawl with him. I used my wall of flames, hoping to damage him and put some distance between us. It didn't seem too bothered by the fire. It seemed that his exoskeleton was keeping it from dying. It summoned larva to its aid. The masses of bodies swarmed under my feet, nipping at my my legs and making it harder to move. The moth took the opportunity to slam me with more eye pollution attacks. The pollution poisoned me and drained my health, sapping it for the insect's benefit. I used my slam attacks to try and smash him, then followed up with some fire wheels and slashes. With little effort, the insect threw a wind wave at me, knocking me away. You fool! You have to burn much, much harder than that to kill me! Then that's exactly what I'll do! I unleashed my flames, burning so bright that I destroyed the ground beneath us, causing both me, the insect, and the artifact to fall into a lava pit below! The insect burned to death, but as a fire warden, lava had no effect on me! How's that for bright? With the threat gone, I claimed the artifact and gained five hearts along with new fire chain powers to immobilize my foes. I'm only one part away from obtaining the Infernal Warden staff. On days 87 to 90, I returned to the overworld and began my search for the final artifact I was missing. I looked around until a little gremlin bumped into me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry, it's okay. I continued to walk along when suddenly I realized that my five other artifacts were missing from my inventory. That little gremlin, it stole from me. I saw that the gremlin was making a run for it. Hey, stop right there. I quickly gave chase, but the gremlin was light on their feet, going faster than I could catch up to. No way! The creature showed no signs of slowing down either, and they soon began to get farther away. I said stop! Desperately, I threw out a blaze of red hot powers, creating a wall of fire that allowed me to corner them. Ah, no, please, please, don't hurt me! The water serpent captured my mom and told me to steal these from you if I wanted to save her! You don't need to steal. I'll help you. Uh, help? But I stole all your artifacts! Aren't you a fearsome fire warden? Why would you help me? Well, 
You're not a bad guy, right? You're just trying to save your mom. Yeah, but... I know how that feels. Believe it or not, my mom has also been captured by the fearsome water wither storm. I'm on a quest to save her and my people. Wow. I didn't think anyone was brave enough to stand up to that guy. Not only am I brave enough, I'll soon be strong enough too. Now let's go save your mom. The gremlin handed me back my things and we left together. On days 91 through 93, I had arrived at the water base where the little gremlin's mom was being held captive. There she is. Please save her, mister. Don't worry. I won't let anything happen to her. Without a second thought, I barged into their base and began to wreak havoc. Come and get it, you punks. The guards of the fort tried to stop me, but they stood no chance against my firepower. As his men were defeated, the water general came out to try and stop me. It's you! You're going down! The water general appeared to swim through the air with a divine grace as he commanded the element of water at his whim. He surged forward, blasting me with a vortex of water. Knowing what was on the line, I struck back with a torrent of fire, leveling slams and punches at him that damaged him significantly. He then summoned sharks that ripped into me with their razor-sharp teeth. I blocked as he continually slashed me with his trident as I summoned my chains of fire, causing massive explosions that damaged him greatly. I managed to finally defeat the water general and ran over to free the mother from her prison as the little gremlin came running over. Mommy! Oh, my baby. Thank you so much for saving me. What can I do to repay you? I'm looking for one more artifact to complete a weapon. Do you have any idea of where that might be? I do, but it's sealed within your own mind. I can hypnotize you, but I must warn you. If you fail your mission to retrieve it, you'll never wake up. If that's the risk I have to take to put an end to all this, I'm willing to do it. Let's go! I tried to clear my mind as the gremlin's mom began to hypnotize me. Within seconds, I had fallen asleep. On days 94 through 96, I woke up in a dream world. I looked around and realized that my dad was standing in front of me. Dad, what are you doing here? In your mind, my boy. So anything is possible. Please, Dad, I need your help. I can't find the last part I need to complete the Infernal Warden's staff. Do you have any idea where I can find it? The final part is at the top of the highest mountain. It'll be a difficult journey, but I know that you, more than anyone else, are up for such a task. Are you sure? I couldn't save you. I let you down. You never let me down, son. I know you will follow this through and save our people and your mother. Thanks, Dad. I love you. I love you too, my son. Now go. Finish this before it's too late. Before I could tell my dad goodbye one last time, I realized I was suddenly awake and back in the real world. I know where the final part is. There's no time to waste. Without a moment of hesitation, I set off, ready to obtain the last piece and put an end to this once and for all. On days 97 through 98, I was following the clues from my dream and arrived at the base of the tallest mountain. That's it. All right, here goes nothing. I scaled my way to the top of the mountain, using my fire powers to keep myself warm on the snow snowy peaks. I finally made it to the top, where I saw the final artifact waiting for me. Yes, Dad was right! Finally, the Infernal Warden Staff will be mine! As I approached the final artifact, the mutant lobster dropped down, stopping me in my tracks. I knew you'd be here. I won't allow you to make that weapon. The Water Wither Storm will rule over all! The mutant lobster charged forward to attack me, and I prepared myself to fight. Immediately, the mutant leapt into the air, coming down to slam me with astonishing force. As he reached the ground, he then stuck his claws deep into the snow, causing rumbling explosions to shake the mountaintop, threatening to knock me right off the peak. I retaliated with my fire chains, turning up the heat with some more flaming fists and fireballs. I had him on the ropes when the mutant lobster suddenly summoned a storm of icicles from the sky on me catching me completely off guard. What the? An ice attack? How did a lobster like you do that? The peak of this mountain is so cold. I can control ice. Now die, you worthless fire mob. They released a series of ice attacks on me, but I had come much too far to lose now. Despite the damage I was taking, I was determined to win. I'm not failing now. Take this. I used my fiery sonic boom on them and managed to overpower them, knocking the lobster back and sending them toppling over the side of the mountain. Exhausted from the fight, I went and claimed the final part, granting me five more hearts and the ability to summon meteors. Finally, now all that's left is to forge the Infernal Warden Staff. I'm coming to save you, Mom! I set off back down the mountain and back towards the Warden Volcano.
On day 99, I returned to the Warden Volcano to forge the parts together into the Infernal Warden Staff, but found my home was still infested with water mobs. Time to show these invaders who's boss. I charged forward, fighting off the water mobs with my fire powers. I called on my new meteors. The enormous blazing boulders rained down one after another, devastating my enemies and leaving trails of scorching earth in its wake. Their numbers were great, but with how much I had grown over my journey, I was able to overcome them. I finally made it to the forge in my home and placed all of the artifact pieces in it. The parts merged together and formed the Infernal Warden Staff. As I grabbed the staff, I instantly gained 10 more hearts. I swelled to a titan-like size, bursting out of the top of the volcano. The rain sizzled harmlessly against me in my new form, no longer damaging me like before. As I felt the awesome new power surging through me, a fresh group of water mobs rushed forward to attack. They didn't stand a chance as I made short work of them, defeating them easily with my upgraded fire attacks. To finish off the enemy forces, I concentrated my fire powers into a deadly beam, piercing the landscape and leaving no survivors. Enough! Come and face me, Water Wither Storm! Suddenly, lightning began to crash down. The rain grew heavier as the Water Wither Storm appeared in front of me. You measly little fool! You've been a thorn in my side for too long! On day 100, I was standing face to face with my greatest enemy, the Water Wither Storm, both of us now titans of our own elements. Looks like you were able to make that little staff of yours, but it's too late to stop me. Today, my storm will consume the whole world. Not if I stop you first. Don't forget who's in control here, you fool. I have your mother. A ball of water holding my mom suddenly appeared in front of me. Bronzo! Why you? Let her go! I'll never take orders from the likes of you! Now, I'm going to do what I should have done a long time ago! Enraged, the water witherstorm surged forward in a fury, ready to attack me. He used his water beam on me, hoping to end the fight quickly, but I endured it with my new titan form. The water witherstorm summoned his tentacles, grabbing my feet to hold me in place as he blasted me with various bolts of electrifying lightning. I tried to fight my way out of their grasp with my powers, and once I got free, I charged up to the monster, shooting him with fireballs and fire breath attacks. I roared at him with every ounce of anger in my body, channeling all my rage toward him in one explosive blast. Ice began to form at my feet as he made the terrain difficult to navigate on. I'd had it. I summoned all my might and called down massive meteors to rain from the sky, dealing him massive damage. Enough! Die, you pest! The Water Witherstorm unleashed his ultimate beam attack one more time, but I was able to withstand the damage, barely hanging on. No, I won't lose. This is for my mom, for my people, for my dad. Remembering who I was fighting for, I summoned an ultimate firepower from the sky, a pillar of light descending from the heavens, piercing my foe. No, this is impossible. My attacks caused a massive explosion as the dust cleared. Nothing was left of the water wither storm. I had finally won the battle. The sky cleared as I went to free my mom from her cage. The water wither storm was defeated and the day was saved. Friends!